Welcome to Nifty 50 Photographers. I'm Richard Gill, I'm a professional photographer. And as you can see, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day. It's towards the end of May. I'm at my home just on the edge of the Lake District. And one of the things I thought would be useful to talk about is how you cope with this high contrast lighting that you get on bright, sunny days. Especially if you're trying to photograph a scene that's got some very dark areas in it too, something in the shade. A good example of this might be trying to photograph an interior of a room where you've got some windows that look straight into the sunshine and you've got that really bright contrasting light coming in from the sun and some areas in the back that will be dark and in shadow and we'll have a look at that in just a moment but another challenging scene is often sunsets and how do you cope with that because you've got the sun it's extremely bright and then everything else falling into shadow and you want to get a nice evenly exposed photo but let's just talk about one tiny thing first and that's dynamic range. Now don't be worried about the technical term. Basically what it means is it's your ability of your camera sensor to cope with the very brightest bits and the very darkest bits. And on days like this, even the best and most expensive cameras can find that a challenge. So let's get started with my example of a property interior. And what I'm looking to do is make sure the view out through the window is correctly exposed. Also, the area of the rest of the room is not underexposed. So I'm making sure that my highlights aren't clipped and that my shadows aren't crushed. Let's move inside and I'll set up my camera and I'll show you the histogram as we go along. And I'll show you some techniques of how to end up with a correctly exposed photograph. Set up my camera in my kitchen. Imagine I was taking a uh, photograph for a real estate agent to uh, show off a property and I want to show the nice green area outside. But over here we've got a hallway and I like to leave doors open quite often because uh, looking at the back of a door can be quite uninteresting. It's very dark that hallway and I'm worried that none of the details will stand out. But now's probably a good time to talk about metering modes and there are a few options here. If you do an average or matrix metering mode, the camera is going to look at the whole scene and try and average the exposure, uh, taking into account the brightest and darkest areas. Now, as you can see from the histogram in this case, it's tending to shove everything uh, a little bit dark because it's overcompensating for the light areas. This is also a white room, so that might be fooling it a little bit. So one way around that would be to use spot metering. Now in spot metering, it's gonna measure the light where you ask it to measure it. So you position the spot over an area and ask it to uh, um, measure the light at the point and set the exposure. If I set that up, and I'll show you what I mean. So here we are, I've got it over the very dark hallway and it's setting the exposure like this. But if I move now and set that uh, metering point to be the bright windows, you'll get a completely different scene. Now, you might be able to bring up the shadows, for example, in post-processing. But if you can't, you're going to have to try and do something else. But what are our options? Well, my first concern was that, is that my highlights don't get blown. And I've got swap metering on at this point. As you can see, the uh, exposure is set up for that very bright area. And the shadows, if I look at my uh, histogram here, uh, in the shadows there, it's just about got all the detail. Actually, get away with that, so that's one solution. If I applied some exposure compensation, now, if you don't know what exposure compensation is, I'll leave a link to a video on that up here. But now I could, for example, just brighten it up a little bit, and that would move the histogram a little bit that way. And uh, so if I added one stop, for example, I might be more comfortable that the shadows now are all going to be uh, uh, shown up and I haven't got anything blowing my highlights. So that's one way around it. Conversely, if I'd uh, had my metering point on the dark area, you can see now that everything is massively exposed and my highlights are uh, right away clipped. So I could exposure compensate the other way and take that down till I get something that gives me a nice curve that's broadly across the whole scene. And you can see I've had to do about two, <clears throat> two stops of 
negative exposure compensation to get a perfectly exposed scene. What else could I do? Well, one easy way around it is to do a HDR shot or a bracketed shot. Basically, what you're going to do is take a number of exposures. You're going to set off with your average exposure. Then you're going to do some shots underexposed, some shots overexposed, blend them all together, and you'll end up with a perfectly exposed image. Typically with property, I tend to do an average exposure and a shot that is minus two and a shot that is plus two. So that's two stops over and two stops under. If it's extremely bright, I might do uh, five exposures. So one at minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on, and plus one, plus two, plus three, and so on. And that will give you a perfectly exposed shot. So I'm gonna take one of those and uh, we'll see how it comes out. I've reset my uh, metering mode to average. I've got my camera set to do a bracketed exposure, average, minus two, and plus two. I've put it on a tripod because you're gonna need that so the images all line up together. I've got a two second delay, and now it'll do the three shots and we'll blend them together in Lightroom in a moment or two. There are occasions where you don't want to spend all that time blending photos. Maybe you're not familiar with the software. Or sometimes if you're doing things like a portrait, it's very difficult to do a HDR exposure because your model might move in that short period of time. So what's your next option? Well, the next thing you could use is some external lighting. Simply use your flash. Now, I would recommend you use a flash that connects to your camera set it to TTL, that's through the lens, so it will meter the same thing that the camera is meeting and it will bring up the stuff in the dark. So make sure you set your exposure not to overexpose your highlights. You don't want your highlights clipped because your flash is going to add some extra light which will bring up the detail in the shadows. So let's take a shot like that. So let's talk about a different scene now. Let's talk about a sunset. Uh, and obviously I'm filming this in the middle of the day, so I can't arrange a sunset just now, but let me talk you through some other photos I've taken. Now what I try and do in the sunset shot is make sure that my highlights aren't clipped. I'm not too worried about the detail in the shadows generally, because it's the overall scene I'm looking for and you're generally taking a landscape photo. So here's a typical example of one I've taken sunsetting over Windermere. And I'm up on a high point. I want to get my foreground detail in. Um, so the bench here in the foreground, I want to make sure that's correctly exposed, but I don't want to overexpose the sun. So simply, I will meter off the sun and get an idea of what that comes out right. It may well work with just matrix metering mode. And I'll just look at the histogram and I can maybe add in a little bit of exposure compensation to make sure the highlights aren't clipped. Once I've got the histogram in the right place, I can take my shot and I can compensate for uh, any of the detail in the shadows that I want to bring up in Lightroom when I process it. And that's how you end up with a perfectly exposed sunset one other tip I can give you for taking pictures of sunsets, if you set your F number, so that's your F stop, quite a narrow aperture, and I would say usually above F10, it will help you to get those like rays coming off the sun, that starburst type effect. Because the smaller the aperture, the more likely your camera is to do that. So that's one little tip to help those sunset photos look even more incredible. So there's three ways you can help yourselves when you're faced with these scenes with high contrast lighting. You can set exposure compensation, you can change your metering to spot metering, and you can use artificial light sources to bring up the areas in the shadows. And if you want a rule of thumb, I would tend to use the artificial light sources for things like portraits, uh, and then you can get the detail in your model's uh, face and so on. Um, the HDR technique of bracketing is very good for things like property and st static subjects. And if you can, you might get away with that just with using a bit of exposure compensation
and not having the hassle of having to blend three images together uh, later on when you're doing your processing. Hope you've enjoyed that video. If you really want to know what to watch next, uh, I would look at my playlist on getting to know your camera because I cover a lot of the things like exposure compensation. And I also have a great video, which I'll leave a link to, that shows you how to do uh, interior photography if you're interested in doing stuff for real estate. In the meantime, it's one of those things you should go out and practice because the more you do it, the easier it'll become and you'll get used to the workarounds that you need to employ. So have some fun with your camera, practice those shots. I look forward to seeing you next time.